going on, everybody? What's up, everybody? Checking in with everybody today. Wait for a couple more people to get into the room. I just hopped on live. What's up, Lazaria, Sylvia, Monica? Mary Jo. What's up, Dust1962? Sheila, Rebecca. What's up, Zaydog? Gay Larcia, Yolanda, the Oracle Lady, Melissa. What up, Aaron? Mary, Marie, what's happening? Marion, what's up? Precious Loves Lopez, what's happening in? What up, Mark? Y'all, it's Sunday. And I just wanted to hop on and just touch base with y'all. Just check in with y'all. Maybe we can discuss what's been going on the past couple shifts. We can discuss what happened last night. How many of y'all watched last night? Did y'all see the full, the, what's it called? The snow moon, the snow moon shift? Yeah, yeah. Last night was wild. Last night was wild. I wanted to come on today and kind of get y'all's opinions on what y'all feel like that was all about. And now I'm back where I was last night. I'm back in the same cemetery. But I kind of want to explain to y'all now that I've processed it a little bit more. <laughs> what I felt like I saw and just get y'all's opinion. <laughs> Precious said she slept with her lights on. Jay Lewis said it was scary as hell. Right? So. As y'all know, there was a car in the cemetery last night, so I felt more comfortable because there was someone else here. But then we drove around to Jesus's, uh, what's it called? The mausoleum? What's it called? The crypt? We moved over to where Jesus was. <laughs> and his pinwheel wasn't really moving like that. And somebody sent a message and was like, Dalen, that's how pinwheels work. Like, they start and stop like that. And I was like, see, clearly you don't watch our videos with Jesus. <laughs> clearly, they don't watch the videos with Jesus. Somebody said my Jeep does the same thing. Y'all, I could, I'm, listen, this Jeep is so old. Well, it's not really old. This Jeep is like 11 years old. <laughs> and I can't go get that little motor fix. I just got to get time. It don't affect nothing it's for the window. And I just haven't had time to go get it done. I feel like it gives her character. <laughs> I feel like Big Red has a stutter. And if you wouldn't judge your baby for having a stutter, don't judge mine. <laughs> but no, somebody was like, that's what pinwheels do. I'm like, man, y'all ain't really just watched our Jesus videos. We have never been to Jesus's resting place and he has not started and stopped conversations like on command. Not I don't want to say on command because that makes it seem like we're pulling strings. But like he responds in a timely manner. Always. In all ways. Am I right or am I wrong, y'all? For my daily graveyard shifters, doesn't Jesus like... He responds all the time, right? All the time, windy or not. He starts to pinwheel when we ask and he stops it when we ask every single time. <laughs> so I just can't chop that up to being that's how pinwheels work. I just can't. It's too, it's, Jesus is too on point every single time, every single time. So last night we go and it was like, it was hard for, the pinwheel to turn like it wasn't any motion and it was windy a little bit last night. 
But then as soon as I felt like I saw that dark figure, that pinwheel start going. And I was taking it as hey, Zeus was like, I'm not going to sit up here and have this conversation with you because I don't want you to wait here and be here because there is something dark here. But what I saw was a really, really tall, dark figure. And it looked like it had a hood on. And it, it wasn't crouched, but it was like, you could tell by the hood, right? the position in it, in which it was looking and it was linked up against the wall. I'm telling you, it had to be like seven feet. If I'm 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 it had to be a foot taller than me. So almost seven feet. And it was like looking down, it didn't move. It didn't like acknowledge. So I was like, maybe it's just the darkness of that corner that looks like a figure. But I don't know. It just felt like Jesus was trying to get us up out of there. Kim said it's the Grim Reaper coming to collect the souls that have been waiting. That's intense, Kim. <laughs> Please do not tell your kids no nighttime stories. <laughs> Cause that is frightening. It's just the soul of the Grim Reaper coming to get the bodies of those that are still resting. <laughs> no, mama. No, tell me the three little bears. <laughs> I want to hear about the three little bears. <laughs> no, you gonna get this Grim Reaper story. <laughs> but yeah, it did. It looked like that. It looked like that. Alma said maybe it was Jesus. Alma, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. If that was Jesus. <laughs> if that was Jesus. <laughs> then who is that white man that we've been praying to? Because <laughs> what I saw did not look like hair of wool. Olive complexion. <laughs> None of that. None of that. My man looked like a shifty drug dealer. And my Jesus ain't no shifty drug dealer. <laughs> he might be a bootlegger. <laughs> now, would I say Jesus turned water into wine? He bootlegged water into wine. <laughs> but he ain't no drug dealer now. My Jesus don't sell drugs. Nor does he hang, <laughs> lurk in the shadows <laughs> of cemeteries. Yeah, even the duck, right? Right? It kind of gave you a Dark Vader feel, Mary Jo. It kind of gave you a Dark Vader feel, for real. Like, all jokes aside, it kind of did give you a Dark Vader, Dark Vader feel. Carrie says she saw him, too. But see, I don't be knowing if y'all be lying, man. Not to call you a liar, Carrie. Not to call you a liar Because I don't know your mama If I don't know your mama I can't call you a liar But what I'm saying is I be feeling like sometimes Y'all just be trying to appease me Like oh Dalen I saw it too Nah man Did y'all? Did you? What did you see? Jay Lewis You said it could have been Walter Listen Nah That couldn't be Walter That couldn't be Walter Cause if that was Walter, Walter got the wrong job. He over here saving souls. He need to be in the NBA. <laughs> Walter, you're six foot ten, brother. Do you have a jump shot? <laughs> Cause you got the wrong job, brother. <laughs> you out here trying to be a garden angel. You need to be out here signing up for the Lakers. Susan, thank you, love. Thank you, Susan. Go back and but bring Stacy with you. Go at dust time and what? Susan, you you must be trying to get me divorced. <laughs> You want me to bring Stacy to a cemetery at nighttime? At nighttime? Tiffany, love, love, love. You want me to bring the Stacy that we know? <laughs> oh no. You must don't want you must want that to be the last graveyard shoe. <laughs> Stacy is not going. She is not going. 
Dalen, can you ask if your love can be contacted if they've been cremated and don't have a resting place? Yeah, I believe so. We've asked that before, and uh, it seems like we got the response that they can and will be responsive. For sure. But, okay, somebody said it was a deep... Oh, yeah, back to the duck. The duck was making noise. The duck was quacking, and it was behind me. Okay, so let's go over the, the chain of events. When I turned down that street, as I was passing by that area, it sounded like something hit the car, which made me curse. That's when I stopped. I get out the car. We right by Jesus. The ducks start going crazy in the back. But as soon as I saw the duck, the dark figure, the duck shut up. <laughs> the duck shut up. So I wonder, like, what was that about? Lori, thank you, thank you, thank you. Diane said, please, no more night shifts alone. Diane, I can't promise you that. Diane, I can't promise you that, love. I can't. As much as I, as much as I want to promise you that, Diane, I can't. We got to push the limits. I just think last night we jumped out there a little bit too far because we went at night and we went on the full moon. Dalen, were you attacked? Nah, uh, Bea, not last night. Nothing touched me. I just saw a dark figure, a really, really, really dark figure. Melanie, thank you. Somebody else in the comments. Did anybody else say they saw it? Somebody said they saw it. But I feel like y'all might be telling me a fib, a fibulator. Uh, somebody said talk about the sting. That was at the... Uh, Y'all, this has been a rough shifting week, ain't it? <laughs> I forgot about the little beast thing. To be honest, Alma, come on, Dalen. I didn't mean Jesus. I know he's not dark. I meant maybe Jesus, the one you were talking to, love. Huh? Oh, Alma, I know. It was just a joke, Alma. <laughs> just a joke, baby. <laughs> don't worry. It's just a joke. <laughs> nah, I don't think it was Jesus, though. I don't think it was Jesus because we've seen a picture of Jesus before and Jesus wasn't that tall. What you say, Linda? Shifting ain't easy, but daily be getting it done. Hey, man. Hey, man. Listen, somebody got to do it or file for unemployment. You hear me? So I want to go back to the cemetery. I feel like the cemetery we went to where I got poked the other day. That was a very new resting community for us. We've never been there before. And they said that it's a lot of negative, bad energy there. And I didn't really believe them at first. But when I got poked, I definitely did. But that's a cemetery that we can go to at night for sure. Rochelle, will a shift look like this in Minnesota? Night shift with Dave? Because I'm going. Uh, I don't know if it's at night. Dave said he found a cemetery for us to go to during the day for sure. So we're going to take groups out there to do graveyard shifting during the day live. So I probably will go live when we do that with the group so y'all can see everybody who's not coming to the event. But that cemetery that we went to, man, that's a cemetery that we can access at night for sure. And it already had that bad energy. If y'all think I should go there and take y'all with me, let me know. Let me know in the comment section if y'all feel like I should go to that cemetery we went to earlier this week. I forgot the name of it. The Sylvester Cemetery or something like that. Where I met the gentleman outside. The one next to Gucci Mane house. <laughs> the one next to Gucci Mane house. Maybe go back at night and see what that energy is like. Rogue says get a red light. Dayla, did you ever get that voodoo cure for syphilis? <laughs> Listen. If anybody has an STD, it's Juwan. And by STD, I mean a spiritually transmitted disease. Because Juwan likes to flirt with these ghosts. I never met somebody who, who, who likes to use what they got to get what they want <laughs> as much as Juwan. <laughs> and that's why he called it STD in Jamaica. <laughs> a spiritually Transmitted disease. Mm, mm, mm. 
Y'all better be careful. They, 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 they pass them out these days. <laughs> better protect yourself. Better protect yourself. Yeah, Juwan said he gonna he gonna come with me. So this week is gonna be a little light, y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. Only because I gotta go back out of town Wednesday. So my aunt that passed away, her funeral Saturday. So we're all going back to Dallas this week to be with the family. So I'm still gonna be shifting out there. It's just like the bigger stories. Uh, I have to wait till I get back. But I got a list. As soon as I get back, we back to shifting. I got a couple of locations I'm going to investigate. And then, yeah, bigger stories that we're going to tackle. So just give me this week to be with the family, y'all. And then starting back next week, we're going to be dropping bigger stories. Bigger stories, y'all, for sure. For sure. Uh, Igor. I don't know what you said, brother. It sounds like another language. I just hope you weren't talking about my mama. <laughs> Pink Glamour says I should do a spirit box session at Lisa Left Eye. She's on the list. She's definitely on the list. She's definitely on the list for sure. Uh, somebody said it takes some time to, to bereave. I am. I am. I'm good, y'all. I handle stuff totally different. Everybody grieves differently. I'm, I'm definitely good. I'm definitely good. And like I was talking to my mom, I just feel like after doing Ghost Brothers and doing the graveyard shift, specifically the graveyard shift the past year, I don't really, I don't know. I view, I view death a lot differently. A lot differently. How about JD Tiplett in Dallas, the CPD cop Oswald alleged Alpha, Alpha, he's on the list. I was supposed to do that like two months ago. I'm trying to hit everybody in that little story. So we've done Lee Harvey. We've done uh 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 who else did we do? Or did we only do Lee Harvey? <laughs> Did we do? Yeah, so we're going to catch that the police officer for sure. For sure. Alma says, maybe you should go to the negative cemetery one more time during the day, then go at night. Love what you do. Prayers to you and your family. Thank you, Alma. Alma, listen. Listen. We ain't playing it safe over here, baby. <laughs> we jumping in feet first. Nah, you're right. You're right, because we didn't really even explore that whole resting area. We only went to one section. So you're right. We probably should do... Uh, a full sweep during the day and then come back at night. But we're going to do that next week for sure. We might do it this week. I go out of town Wednesday. So that gives us what? Monday, Tuesday. We got what? Monday and Tuesday. Hmm. So maybe Monday. I don't know. Maybe next week. We'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. Have you been to Stevie Ray Vaughn's resting place? I have not. Vicky, we've done John Bonet. We've done John Bonet. You got to check that one out. Dalen, come to Hinsdale with us July 7th and 8th. Where is Hinsdale? Oh, that's a house, ain't it? Ain't it called the Hinsdale house? I think I got your message about that before. It's in July? I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I got to stop being so down because one of y'all might try to kidnap me one day. <laughs> I got to stop saying yes, y'all. Because <laughs> I'm the type of say yes and really come. Because <laughs> I be forgetting. I be thinking that I'm just dialing and y'all just my coworkers be done showed up. Grandma Deb got some got some some hot butter <laughs> and some some arm ties. Grandma Deb, what are you doing, baby? I don't like candle wax. <laughs> Grandma Deb got me tied up in the basement. Kim, I like that. The Atlanta child murders for sure. For sure. Paul says, hey, Dalen, how can I get a notice when you go live so I don't miss out? Paul, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. 
I don't even know when I'm going live, and that's the problem. <laughs> I need to be have more of a schedule. Michelle G, could you do a live shift on April 8th during the solar eclipse? I'm going to be honest with y'all. At this point, I really feel like y'all are trying to get me abducted by aliens. <laughs> like, I feel like y'all just want me to keep pushing the envelope until I'm abducted by aliens. Because now y'all got me messing with solar eclipses, <laughs> zodiac signs. Y'all are definitely trying to get me abducted. Adam says, Dalen, have you ran into any crazy fans yet? Like, do you have any stories about weirdos you've met? Any stalkers? You know what? Not really. Everybody has been very, very, very... I'm, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, the, this is the only issue that I've ever ran across when it comes to... I don't like using the word fans because that just sounds like weird. I like saying supporters. The only issue I have ever ran across with supporters, and it happens a lot. I'm talking about more times than not it happens. Um, they can be very, very handsy. So I cannot tell you how many times I have met someone and asked for a hug and I've gotten my butt grabbed. Countless. Jawan too. Marcus too. Like at this point, it's like a running game. Like we sit here and count. He'd be like, oh, here come. Here she come. <laughs> and I'm telling you, y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. The older, the, the handsier. <laughs> The older, the handsier. <laughs> the more season, the more passes y'all be trying to get. Y'all be trying to get passes on that asses. <laughs> Steffel, love from Arlington. Are you from the home team? You from the home side? Want to go to Harriman Hospital May 5th? Mark, I would love to. Y'all better send me an email. Send me an email. Y'all, the older, the handsier. <laughs> It's funny. It's wild, though. It's wild. It's wild. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. It made me... It wasn't... Now I ain't going to say it wasn't, but... Like, you fellas... I'm talking to the fellas right now. I'm talking to the fellas right now. When women tell you what it's like to be, like, harassed, <laughs> please listen to them. I am 100% sure that ladies experience things that us as fellas could never imagine on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> and I can only somewhat empathize just from how many times my ass has been grabbed. <laughs> and I am not no beautiful lady. <laughs> I am little old Dalen. <laughs> I ain't even got no ass. <laughs> My butt is as flat as a uh, uh, ironing board. But you think that stopped Granny? Granny don't care. <laughs> Granny don't care. Oh, I'm going to tell you another thing. I'm going to tell you another thing that, y that I get a lot of. A lot of. Y'all, listen to me. Listen to me when I tell you this. Look me in my face when I tell you this. It is not okay <laughs> to go in for a hug with me and to then slip drugs into my pocket. <laughs> Guys, don't get me locked up. Please do not get me locked up. And I know you're thinking, Dalen, how many times have you gone in for a hug and somebody's put drugs in your pocket? Guys, every event that I go to. <laughs> Every event that I go to, drugs get slid into my pocket. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to not say thank you. <laughs> but come on now, y'all trying to get me locked up. Y'all trying to get me locked up. Somebody, Vicky said, oh my goodness, why would somebody do that to you? Why would somebody? <laughs> it's why would they? <laughs> it's they. Y'all, y'all have... Y'all, and it'd it, it be the funniest. It'd be the funniest. I left you something in your pocket, baby. I left you something in your pocket. 
Ma'am, this is crack. <laughs> you cannot put crack in my pocket, lady. <laughs> Ma'am, this is meth. This is meth. <laughs> Please. No, I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. It ain't cracking, man. Y'all stop playing with me. Stop egging me on. <laughs> y'all stop egging me on, man. <laughs> but no, nah, it don't be cracking meth. But it does be a lot of marijuana. And I just want to let y'all know, I cannot, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rude. But I, I just can't smoke something <laughs> that I don't know what you rolled up, y'all. <laughs> I appreciate you looking out for me, but that's how you find yourself strung out in a chicken coop. <laughs> and I, I can't go out like that. I can't go out like that, y'all. But I appreciate the hospitality. A hundred percent. What else? What else do I deal with? So we got the sexual harassment. We got the drugs. What else? Yeah, those are probably the main thing. Those are probably the main thing. But it's cool. I enjoy it. I welcome it all because y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. Oh, Julie. Julie didn't get the chicken coop joke. Julie, listen, you got homework. You got homework, Julie. There is a classic movie. It's literally rated right up there with Gone with the Wind. It is called Friday. It is uh, a classic. It's a hood classic. It's a hood classic. But you would learn about a character by the name of Smokey. Smoke Dog. And uh, yeah, he had a little run in with some shaky, shaky smoke. It ended up in a chicken coop. <laughs> So, before you log on to the next shift, I need you to go watch Friday. The first one. Everybody got to watch it. Look at all y'all watching Friday. Look at y'all. I love y'all. Our group is so eclectic and diverse. <laughs> Somebody said, Azura said, did you ever do the spirit box with the ashes of a deceased yet? Not yet. Not yet. I don't have any ashes. I don't have any ashes available just yet. But that is on the to-do list. Somebody said, ain't it a horror? Uh, it's a horror. It's a horror because they almost lost their life over $200. <laughs> That's what people don't realize about Friday. That whole movie was because they owed... Big perm, big worm, $200. <laughs> Y'all, if your life was on the line, you telling me between two grown folks and your life was on the line, you could scrounge up $200? <laughs> hey, man. All right, y'all. What else? What else? Steven says, I'm better than this smut. Well, Steven, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, Steven. So what does that mean now, brother? <laughs> maybe you are, though, Steven. You are. You are. Steven, you are too good for us. <laughs> we are not worthy of your time, Steven. So for that sake, I think you should leave and let us just be. Because clearly you have way more to do today, Steven. <laughs> way more to do on this Sunday. What else, guys? Yes, Michelle, Tombstone, Arizona. That is definitely on the list. That is definitely on the list. James said, can you ask the spirits if they go to their own funeral? For sure. Kelly Mack, thank you, thank you. We actually did a shift, I want to say like a week and a half ago, and a gentleman was passing away. Um, they were There was having a burial as we were doing the shift and it sounded like we were actually getting responses. Thank you, Don. I hope you feel better, love. Lana, thank you so much. My laugh makes your day. I appreciate you. Caroline says, Dalen, I can send you a little of my, what is that? I lost the message. Dang, I lost the message, my bad. 
Oh, I can send you a little of my both my parents. What? Carolyn, you better not send me none of your parents' ashes. With all due respect. <laughs> With all due respect, don't send me none of your parents' ashes. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. <laughs> don't do me like that, baby. Hey, if I open up a package and some ashes fall out, I'm firing everybody. I am firing everybody. We doing we doing a mass layoff. If I if I if I ever open up a package and some ashes fall out. Rival bully says, "Are you gay?" Rival, to answer your question, no. <laughs> but to ask you a question, if I was, <laughs> What was going to be your next response? <laughs> let's play a little game called Let's Guess His Next Response. What's your next response? Balls in your court, buddy. Balls in your court. Y'all, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. Somebody said, get some weed and put the person's ashes in it and smoke it. Danielle, I would say that that's crazy, but they actually said that's what they did with Tupac in real life. So the rapper Tupac, when he died, they cremated him. And his group, they say that they sprinkled a little bit of his ashes inside of a blunt and they smoked it and passed it around. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. That is the most insane thing I have ever heard in my life. I'm gonna that's that is just as crazy as I will never forget. I was in the fifth grade. I went to private school. There was this one boy. <laughs> we were sitting at the lunch table. He poured salt and pepper on the table, and he sniffed it up his nose salt and pepper in the fifth grade that boy almost died that boy to this day he can't smell <laughs> to this day he can't smell i put that up there with smoking somebody's ashes because that's just different who need on said they snorted wood shavings See, we had students like you in my school. <laughs> we had students like you in my school. We had to keep you separated because you was dangerous. Because anybody that sniff wood chips, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. You got out of school at 115. Everybody else got out at 330. You for sure got out at 115 because they could not allow you to be around the other kids at all. Not sniffing wood chips, you wasn't. Not sniffing wood chips. That's wild. We don't judge at the graveyard shift. But we judge about sniffing wood chips. <laughs> you are being judged. Uh-oh, somebody said they used to sniff pixie sticks. Lord, is this... Lord, is this the is this the group of people that I hire? <laughs> Lord, is this the hiring pool that you bless me with for the graveyard shift? They sniffing pixie sticks and wood chips down here, Lord. This is the hiring pool that we got. This is the hiring pool. Oh my gosh. Darlene says she woke up with a shadow person looking down at her. That's crazy. I know that's probably the scariest thing you probably ever had. Somebody said sniffing wood chips could cause fungi to grow up the nostril. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're sniffing wood chips, nostril fungus is the least of your worries. <laughs> that's the least of your concerns. <laughs> if you out here sniffing wood chips. 
Karen says she feels abnormal. She didn't do any of that in school. No, 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 Karen. <laughs> no, no, Karen. <laughs> Don't you dare feel bad because you weren't sniffing pepper, pixie snicks, or wood chips. You had a great childhood. <laughs> Don't let nobody tell you no different. Susan, will you be visiting Toby Keith? Love, love, love. Will you be doing the Ghost Brothers again? I didn't see the dark figure. It was so dark. Go figure. Susan, we're definitely going to be doing more Ghost Brothers. I will. I'm be. I don't. I. I'll for, I do a Toby Keith. I do whoever y'all want me to do, man. Whoever. Let's see. Somebody said at least we did our dumb stuff before we met. Yep. Said we had a kid in school that would snort and eat just about anything for money. Y'all. And y'all are what I would like to call enablers. <laughs> y'all were enablers. <laughs> what do you do? I'm new here. Well, Stace, that's a great question. I am a former stripper. Uh, times got hard. Uh, I found myself on Tuesday nights after Bible study uh, on the pole. But then I was brought to the light. And after my days of stripping, I found spirituality and I became a ghost hunter. So a stripping ghost hunter is what I do, Stace. Cat says, I have a bit of my dad's ashes. He was a comedian. Cat, let me, let me ask you a question. How do you have a bit of your dad's ashes? Where are the rest of them? No, I'm just playing, Stace. I don't want you to think I'm a stripper. Uh, we can't get that. We can't let that rumor get out, Stace. <laughs> we can't let that rumor get out, Stace. <laughs> but nah, I am just a person that um that's interested in the afterlife and paranormal. So I go to cemeteries and I try to speak to those who may not have been spoken to in a long time. And then I go to other hunted locations and I essentially hunt for ghosts. So this channel is just a safe place for like minded people. Uh, that yeah, interested in the afterlife. Paul, I appreciate you, man. I need to do Loretta Lynn's haunted house. Okay, okay. Can you ask the spirits if they go to their own funeral? Yes, man, we've asked that before. And we've done a session with somebody while their funeral was going on. So I would say yes. The answer to that question is yes. Go to the Warren's grave. Got it. I'm on it, Patty. Right, Tracy, tell them this is a place for fun, people. We like to have fun in these parts. If you ain't trying to have fun and you too serious, this ain't the job for you guys. Take your ass to Disneyland. They're hiring. Opie says, does your mom watch these shifts? No. <laughs> no, she does not. <laughs> no, she does not. Somebody says, well, do you know what it's called when you're half sleep and you're half awake? While you're talking in your sleep and awake? That's interesting. Pink Glamour says, I tagged you on a video for Instagram for Ghosted and Roasted. I'm going to go look. I'm going to go look. Dalen, will you have more guest shifters? Yes, 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 yes. My plan for the next month or so is to be way more organized. We have a lot of plans for the channel, and it's just kind of hard because I'm doing it all by myself. So I just need to be more organized. So I'm about to bring somebody onto the team. I need somebody that can answer emails. Answer emails and respond to emails. That's what I need. Somebody that can answer and respond to all the emails. I'm going to give you the password to the email account. <laughs> that means I got to trust you. I got to trust you. I'm going to give you the password, but I need your social security number and your life insurance policy. Just in case. But nah, yeah, I need somebody that can help me go through these emails, y'all. That would save me a lot of time. That would save me a lot of time.
Oh yeah, why y'all here? I just dropped a food review video, Bites with Daylin. Y'all go check it out, Bites with Daylin. I dropped another food review video earlier today. Y'all check the kid out. You should go to the old Baraboo Inn in Baraboo, Wisconsin. You featured it on the Fright Club. Okay, okay. I have a bit of my husband's ashes, some in a regular urn, some in a small three-inch urn. Yeah, I don't want y'all thinking I was making fun of anybody that shares ashes. Listen. Listen, I ain't mad at it. Can I ask you a question? Because y'all can't tell me something like that and then get mad if I got a question. <laughs> have you, for those that are sharing ashes, respectfully, have you ever thought about what part of the body you have? <laughs> like, what if you got a leg? What if you got a, a ear? What if you got a kneecap? That's that's interesting. Like, what part of the body do you have if you have if you're sharing? Remember I told you about that lady who her brother died and she didn't she wasn't on good terms with her brother. So she cremated him and she put his ashes in the trunk of her car. She was riding around in a cutlass <laughs> with a body in a trunk. Literally. <laughs> That's wild. Phil, I ain't never thought about it either till now. <laughs> You might got you might got a, a a shoulder. You might got a shoulder in your urn. Somebody said, you know, you make a good comedian. Don't tell me that. Don't have me taking this show on the road. Don't you have me taking this show on the road, y'all? <laughs> oh, this gave me some Sonya. Can I send you an email about some strange stuff, possibly paranormal? Can you give me some answers? Sonia, I can only give you a my opinion because I don't have any answers. I don't have any answers. But I would love to. Uh, somebody says, I didn't know you could split up the ashes, but it makes sense for sure. For sure. Chaz. Okay, for sure. Send me an email, Chaz. And put your name in there. I need that. I need that. And y'all, you have to have proper paranormal etiquette. PPE. Proper paranormal etiquette when responding to emails. Because <laughs> they can get feisty. They can get feisty. But I do need you to know how to clap back. Because <laughs> we don't take no mess at the graveyard shift. I need you to be polite, but I need you to be petty. <laughs> Cause some of these people gotta get a petty response back to them. Julie, I'm for sure gonna do live events and come out there. Regina, my daughter and I have talked about my ashes and she tells me she keeps me in putting an EMF on next to me. If I get mad, I can make it go red. Until you start showing her you too mad and she take a battery out you. <laughs> she take that battery out your back. <laughs> y'all, I love y'all. I love y'all. King Nah, you email me? Okay. Don't worry. My new assistant, my new graveyard shift. Uh, What's that person called? Receptionist, the graveyard shift chief executive receptionist <laughs> will be getting back to you shortly. <laughs> Eczema, hi from Puerto Rico. There go my people, Spider Queen and Brentwood. What up, y'all? Listen, you can email me whatever you want, y'all. Whatever you want. I promise you, my chief executive receptionist officer, <laughs> my zero, my my zero, my chief executive receptionist officer <laughs> will get back to you in a timely manner. 
Oh, y'all. Danielle, what's happening in Pittsburgh? Okay. Any more questions, y'all? What time is it? It's 5 o'clock? 4.45? Our resident shifter sent in a video today. I might post it tomorrow. I might post it tomorrow. So we might have a remote shift going on tomorrow, guys. Mike says, have you ever done a spirit box session at a family graveyard? I, I did it at my aunt, I mean, at my grandmother's grave like two days ago. And I've done other sessions at my grandmother's grave before. But we don't, my family has a like a, a plot in West Texas. It's my dad's family. So I'm going to go out there. It's probably like eight people in my family all buried together. So I definitely want to go out that way. What up, Anthony? Dylan, it's 9 p.m. for you. Where you at? H. Baker, I'm actually going to be coming to Tampa really soon. Betty, what's happening, Betty? Jocelyn, what's up? Flory says a quarter to 10 in the UK. I will keep it going. Thank you so much. Zage, you in Tasmania? I can't believe we are really all over the world like this, man. Y'all are amazing. It says, how long did it take you? How many times did you go to start getting them to talk to you through the box? Great question. Got to be kidding me. So I started ghost hunting probably about maybe nine years ago. And uh, my first time ghost hunting, I literally just went to the app store and I typed in ghost hunting tools. And the first app that popped up was the Sono X10 Spirit Box. So I cut it on and just like everybody else, I was like, what's this static? What's this noise? I can't hear anything. It was just the most random thing ever. But I started playing with it more and more and more. And I remember one day my name came out of there and I was like, oh, wow. Then I started asking questions and started getting answers. And just over time, I just started to be able to hear better and better and better. And over the last year of doing these spirit box sessions almost every day, just playing with that instrument over and over again, it definitely has tuned my ear to just hear through the noise. Like, I don't know. So like the past year, really, it's been, I feel like I've become like a professional spirit boxer. Yeah. Lazari says, I'm married to Stacy with a daughter. Yep, sure am. Sure am. Oh, y'all. I love y'all. Starnay McCoy says, hi, I just discovered your YouTube channel. I'm a big fan of Ghost Brothers, so I was glad to stumble upon this. Welcome to the family. We do graveyard shifts, we talk to ghosts, we hunt haunted loc I mean we investigate haunted locations, and on days like this, we sit back and just shoot the shoot the stuff. Just shoot the stuff. Mr. Kartoffel, what's up, man? He said Penny says, did it for once, just once. Did the ghost call you to come back in the cemetery? When? Dalen, do you think families are reunited with their miscarried children when they pass? Sherilyn, we've we talked about this before. I think so. And I really have no rhyme or reason for why I think so. It's just a personal feeling that I had. And you're talking to somebody that's dealt with two miscarriages in the past. So, like, I think I'm going to see him again. For sure. For sure. That's just my honest thought. And I could be wrong. I don't know. But that's just a feeling. Toxic Man says, can you explain what a succubus is? Hey, man. You know what it is. Now, what is it? A succubus or an incubus? 
It ain't it like a spirit that do it to you? <laughs> one is a one is for guys and one's for gals. <laughs> Either way, you don't want no succubus, no incubus. None you don't want none nothing in your bus. <laughs> Leave it alone. Leave it all alone. Bianca, there's the, that's the only way to work. Being clocked in at both your jobs. It is 451, y'all. 451. Dalen, do you have or do you do a ritual ritual before doing a spirit box session? Angie, I do. I pray. Uh, I set my intention. And before I even cut the camera on, y'all, I literally walk through the cemetery and just speak to everybody, like in the immediate area and around, like before I even cut the camera on. So I like I try to introduce myself because I feel like I'm walking into somebody else's home, somebody else's personal space. So to be sure that I'm being respectful, I try to introduce myself and tell them why I'm here. KD says, a preacher you know told you that miscarriages are angels who have to be born. Maybe. 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 Who oh, no. knows? Betty says, do I believe in reincarnation? The Christian in me says no. But the but the brother with questions, I could see how it makes sense. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I, I I don't know. Like I'm still stuck in that in that space. I see how it makes sense. And then you just deal with stuff like you see scenarios where people have been born with like this whole past life memory. Like I've seen interviews of like little kids being born and knowing like a whole life of somebody else. And then you Googling it and it really was a person named X, Y, and Z who died the same way this little kid say that he died. Like, how do you explain stuff like that? How do you explain stuff like that? So... I am just a person says, how do you handle stress? What makes a person to be confident? Uh, I think confidence just comes with just not caring what people think. I think the moment you stop caring what people think, your confidence just shoots through the roof because you're not really concerned about the thoughts and opinions of others. And I think I've just always been that type of person because I've just realized that everybody has their own crap going. I don't care how great you make your life look and how better you make yourself seem than others. If I gave somebody a million dollars to investigate your life, <laughs> I guarantee they could pull up some BS and that's on everybody. So once you realize everybody got their own crap, man, it ain't nothing to think about no more. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And the people that walk around acting like they ain't the most, them the ones that is the most. <laughs> Straight up and down. Straight up and down. But yeah, live your life. If it's something you want to do and it's not a detriment to yourself or others, do it. No regrets. Do it. If you want to start a YouTube channel and you want to go out and hunt ghosts, and you just afraid to post your first video because somebody might say something, somebody might judge you. Who cares? Who cares? They probably pick their feet and smell their finger afterwards. <laughs> and you would never know that. But if you did know that, <laughs> you wouldn't care what they thought about you. 100%. 100%. So, do your thing, y'all. Oh, yeah. So the rest of this week, I'm going to post a big chunk of the T-shirt designs that y'all sent. I'm going to post them. I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody sent one. And I fell in love with it. <laughs> I personally fell in love with it. I was like, I damn near can end this contest right now. 
because I genuinely, genuinely like this one design <laughs> a lot. I ain't gonna tell y'all which one it is. I'm gonna let y'all see it. But I'm gonna post the rest of them this week. And the first drop, I mean, the, the first drop of this year is gonna be in March. Probably around my birthday. My birthday's March the 18th. That's usually the time of the month that we do those drops anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna post the rest of them this week. We got some great contenders. I don't want y'all to think we got some BS. We got some great contenders, y'all. But it's just one that I was like, that's clever. That's clever. Oh, uh, Angie, everybody's been doing great. We got some great artists in the, in, the, in the family. I might have to carry some of them designs over to the next t-shirt drop, y'all. Because it's just, we got some really cool ones. We got some really cool ones. We got some really cool ones. For sure. All right, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here. I will be back tomorrow. We will have a shift dropping tomorrow. For sure. For sure. And we'll be going live a couple times this week. We lay my aunt to rest on Saturday. I ain't gonna tell you what I was thinking. My mama was like, you ought to do a session. It's her sister. That's how my mama is so supportive. It's her sister. She was like, you ought to do a session at her gravesite where they where, once they bury her. And I was like, dang, mama. Because my aunt has always been a supporter of what I was doing with Ghost Brothers and everything. Like, always. So I know if she if she could reach out and talk, she would. And that would be one person I would feel comfortable doing it because that's my family. And my family has already gave me like the the green light to try to contact my aunt. So maybe. Maybe I go live Saturday from her resting space. I'm all about trying to figure this stuff out. And like I said, this is just this gives me an opportunity to try to speak to somebody I trust. And it gives us an opportunity to explore the idea of trying to speak to someone who's newly transitioned respectfully, because this is somebody I know that wouldn't mind. As opposed to us just trying to do, you know, some random person whose family may feel some type of way about it. So we're going to see. We're going to see Saturday. All right, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here. Love, love, love. Catch you tomorrow.